Hi there, I'm Angela. Welcome to the channel or welcome back. Today I'm going to be sharing some seeds that I recently purchased. If that sounds interesting, stay tuned. As I mentioned on a previous video, maybe the last video or the one before that, I did take advantage of a really good sale that Botanical Interest had recently. And by the way, if you are trying to build your seed collection or if you're just like me, addicted to buying seeds, you want to stay tuned to all the different seed companies at this time of year because a lot of them are starting to put their seeds on sale. They need to clear out their stock from this year as much as they can. And I would say from about this, this point onwards, really stay tuned to that if you're looking to, uh, if you're looking for seeds because you can get some really good deals. And today I'm going to be sharing with you some of the seeds I've recently purchased. So recently, both Botanical Interest and Annie's Heirloom Seeds had some pretty good sales, like 25% off. I think both of them I got sales of 25% off. So I did take that as a chance to buy some seeds, either that I've kind of had my eye on, or in one case, such as cucumbers, that I had completely uh, used all my seeds up this year. So I needed to kind of restock on those. So let's take a look at these. So from Botanical Interest, if you've never ordered from them before, they always send their seeds in these nice little box and ships really well. And they also always provide a seed starting guide. So that's really handy if you, um, if you are in need of that, if you're kind of starting out or if kind of also like me, you're always looking to refresh your knowledge or you know if you if you've been gardening for a while there's some things that you might have like forgotten or you get set in your ways doing something a certain way and then it's always good to kind of like give yourself a refresher because you oh yeah i forgot about that and they always also kind of like baker creek does give you a free package of seeds. So this time I got these tall sunflowers. This was their freebie. So that's kind of nice. And I wanted to do like the, the official unboxing, but I needed to go ahead and start getting some of these seeds in the ground as I'm doing succession planting in my garden and thinking about the fall. So I've already opened up all of my seed packets and I'll just show you what I got. So one of them was this Painted Daisy Robinson's Blend. I've never grown daisies, but I thought um, this looked very pretty and I'd like to give that a try. And these are perennials, yes, perennials in zones three to seven. We are in 6A here, so this should work out pretty nicely. And even if they don't bloom this year, I'll have them for next year, uh, theoretically and hopefully. And what else? I also got some more beet seeds. I still do have a lot of beet seeds, but I'm really trying to grow a lot of beets for this fall. So I thought I'd try this. This is called Gourmet Blend, and it has three different varieties. Detroit Dark Red, Chiogia, which is bright pink and white, and Golden, which is, has a bright yellow flesh. And I'm really drawn to the illustrations too. I'm kind of a sucker for a pretty drawing. So that always kind of pulls me in. Uh, next, I got some more marigolds. These are, nope, I take that back. They're calendula, but I guess another name for calendula is pot marigold. And this variety is called zeolites. I've had good luck growing calendula with the, the one variety that I started last year called Bronzed Beauty. It performed really well, was really pretty, so I thought I would expand my calendula stash there. Uh, the next thing I got was Columbine Mechana Giants Blend. This is also a perennial in zones three to nine. I've grown Columbine before, and the one that I grew before I did not grow it from seed. It was a plant that I purchased and it only had orange flowers. So this will be a nice pretty mix of different colored flowers. I'm very excited about that one. And the next one is a Cosmos. I have grown this before, Seashells Blend. 
it did pretty well. So I used up all my seeds last year. So I thought I would um, try it again. And this time, if these do well, if it wasn't too late to get them started, I might try saving seeds from this so I don't have to buy it again. And what else? One more thing from Botanical Interest. This is a pepper, it's a bell pepper, a sweet pepper. The wind's blowing all my things away. Called Orange Sun. And I have grown these years ago. Uh, they did well, but you have to wait like a long time for them to fully mature and turn this, this nice orange color. So it's too late to start these for this year, but I'll have them for next uh, early spring to start seeding these indoors. And that is it from Botanical Interest. And the other company that I bought some seeds from because they were also having a 25% off sale was Annie's Heirloom Seeds. And the first one is Organic Honey Nut Squash. I've really never grown a winter squash. I did put some winter squash seeds in this year, but they didn't really do too well. So I'm going to give it another try. And maturity 100 days. I did go ahead and get a couple of these seeds in, but Technically, going by our average first frost date, we are right at about 85 or 86 days now. So I got these in the ground a few days ago. So it could be like touch and go on whether these succeed or not, but I still have more seeds. I thought, well, I'll give it a try. And with the weather patterns anymore, who knows? It, we may get um, a very late first frost and I could get some squash off of this. Uh, then the next thing I got, because I'm kind of in like squash mode, <laughs> I saw this. This is also a squash mix. It's a winter squash and it's just a mix. And let's see, it has five types. Burgess Buttercup, New England Pie, Sweet Dumpling, Table Queen Acorn, and Waltham Butternut. So this one has maturity of 85 days. So I might um, do a little, little bit higher chance of success with this one. And next I got a wildflower mix for beneficial insects. And it says um, we concocted this powerhouse wildflower mix to attract wasps, hoverflies, and other beneficial insects to devour the bugs that eat your plants. And I'm thinking that probably this is a mix of annuals and perennials. Also draws butterflies, hummingbirds, and other pollinators. Anytime in the past when I've tried uh, a wildflower mix from whichever seed company, uh, it's done usually pretty well and I kind of, um, I've done those like in large pots and then at the end of the season I just leave it alone and kind of let it go over the winter and see what will come back next spring and kind of go from there. I uh, have a mix that I started last year. It was a pretty good variety but I noticed that the only thing that came back from it was um, uh, what is it called? Coreopsis. Yeah, I love Coreopsis, so I'm glad those came back. So those did well over the summer. Then the other two things that I picked up from Annie's were another tomato variety. This is called Rosella. This is a purple pink cherry tomato. So I'm finding any more that the cherry tomatoes do better for me than the, the full-size tomatoes. Although this year it's been pretty good so far for both types. And then the original thing that led me to go seed shopping cucumbers. This is straight eight. I didn't grow these this year um, yet. I'll probably get some of these seeds in the ground because maturity is only 60 days. Um, but I've grown straight eight in the past and they've done pretty well. So I'm gonna hold that one out so I can get those uh, in the ground. And next video, I'm gonna do another garden tour and kind of show you guys things that I've pulled out either that have run their course or that are failing for any reason and show you what I'm putting into those empty spots just to keep it going. Um, that's one thing that it took me a little while to learn as a gardener. My first few years vegetable gardening, 
I didn't quite like grasp or maybe I hadn't learned the concept of succession sewing. And if something's failing or it's kind of done, just go ahead and yank it out and then put something in that will do well and you have enough time left in your season to grow or maybe something that's more cold hardy and that can linger around a little bit longer and not quite a, a rush to come to maturity. So I've done quite a bit of that this year, more so than I've ever done before. So I'll give you guys a look at that and I hope you're having a great weekend. I hope your garden's doing well and I hope you're getting lots of time out in the garden. And until next time, bye.